Welcome back, crazies, to another vlog episode. <laughs> vlog episode, I was about to say. Uh, so in this vlog, you're going to get a few things. I'm building storage um, for my uh, my books and my supplies and all of my stuff that I haven't been able to unpack. Uh, we're going to have a retro exploration into the uh, arcade museum, which is fantastic. And then highlights from uh, LitCon, which was the little engine that could a uh, small convention um, that was really amazing so storage is the key to everything and when you're doing your own books and you're publishing your own stuff um, access is is the most essential thing and it's also a time saver so I needed to really find solutions for my garage where I have a lot of my books and supplies and my travel stuff for conventions um, and stuff that I haven't been able to unpack and uh, so I decided to take the plunge invest in um, some bookshelves and uh, get this going but in the meantime don't forget, this weekend I'll be at Central Texas Comic Con in Waco, Texas. I hope to see you there. And some of these amazing events this year. I have a packed agenda for 2024. And I'd love to see you at some of these events. May 4th, I will be uh, doing a book signing at Geek Out in Mansfield, Texas. May the 4th be with you. or uh, It's going to be fun. So I hope to see you there. So if you're in Texas, come and hit me up. So again, <clears throat> why... Why add this to this vlog? Because there are some things that you can do that that are outside of creating, right? So drawing and writing and editing. Uh, <clears throat> this is some of it, right? So some of the be behind the scenes stuff that most people don't even talk about um, are critical to mental sanity, um, time saving solutions, uh, you know, just accessing your product at any time. So when I moved out to Texas, there's a lot of stuff I haven't been able to get to. Uh, but it's been uh, really annoying me and frustrating me because of the amount of time I've been I've been wasting looking for things and just I needed to really start streamlining uh, my process especially since I have 12 events that I'm doing this year and it's every month so every month this year I have an event and so it's critical that I make it easier on myself since I am a one-man operation to uh, uh, find solutions to access my product so I found these shelves on Amazon these shelves if you've seen my original vlog from my first office that I built studio that I built back when I lived in Jersey uh, I actually invested in these shelves before so they're pretty sturdy they hold a lot of weight I think each shelf alone holds about 150 pounds so it just made sense and they were affordable I didn't want to break the bank I wanted something that was cost-effective and so I was debating because every time I take away from drawing uh, is a time that creates frustration for me because I have deadlines and I'm still trying to finish up that Kickstarter. It's coming guys, it's coming guys, I promise. And I have a surprise for everybody because of the delayed in time. But so I decided to take the plunge, invest the time and do this. And why, why storage solutions? For many reasons. Um, you know, inventory control. Right, so if you are doing your own taxes, you have to be able to account for everything that you own and everything that you sell, incoming and outgoing, right? So, and it's easy to be able to track your inventory levels, right? And go to the actual shelf where the product is uh, and access it. When you're shipping products, when people place orders on your website, it's easy to go to the location, grab the stuff, pack it out, ship it. So, organization is critical. If you haven't done it, you haven't invested in time, um, please do so. I've seen a lot of videos where people just have boxes and boxes and boxes in their office space or whatever. And um, uh, it's just not ideal. Um, so this year is a packed agenda. So I wanted to really clean up my act and uh, get my life together <laughs> and make it easier on myself. And uh, so these are the four shelves and I was happy finally get this done. I think it was about four hours worth of work, um, uh, four and a half, maybe five. And this is the final product. I was really excited with it. Uh, it makes things easier for me. I can find everything and I can go. And uh, it was pretty cool. All right, you've probably heard me talk about it if you've listened to my show, Catch the Craze Podcast. Uh, 
I've had some challenges um, and I needed to be able to draw on the go. And so I wanted a secondary tablet. The problem was that on my laptop, I couldn't have two drivers for this tablet that I'm unboxing right now, the X-Pen, and my Wacom Cintiq because they would conflict and it, would just, it wouldn't allow me to use my, my, my pen tool um, the way it's meant to be. So I invested in another laptop for this tablet. And um, what this does for me, this, uh, and I wanted something small that I can take with me, travel with when I go to hotels, um, that I can, if I want to sit down in the kitchen and uh, have a conversation with my wife, instead of being upstairs and locked in my studio, um, I could do so. I can be in bed watching a movie with her um, and still being productive in drawing. So I wanted something that's portable, um, lightweight, um, easily accessible uh, to go. So I got this X uh, pen um, and I can tell you right now I absolutely love it. Uh, it was easy to install. It was, um, it's lightweight. It is fascinating. Now I had to get used to a smaller screen because of my Cintiq um, HD plus, I forgot what it's called, 24 HD. It's a massive mon monitor. I have a huge screen. Uh, so not, not a lot of zooming on that. With this, I have to zoom a lot. But the reason why I decided to get the XP is because I do not like working on uh, an iPad Pro. I just don't like the way, uh, and I use Clip Studio with the iPad Pro. I haven't really learned some of the other uh, applications that a lot of artists are using, and that's my problem, and I'm working on that, uh, but I haven't really, it is so small, uh, and it takes a lot more time uh, because you gotta make sure your hand's not shaking and all this other stuff, and I just, had, I'm not skilled with it. So I got this, um, and you can see here are extra nibs for the pen uh, I mean it comes with everything it comes with different plug-in devices um, whether it's international if you're traveling overseas it has the plug um, for those outlets and US outlets as well uh, it is just fascinating if you haven't picked up an XP number one it's affordable it's not expensive number two it is fantastic it feels good the, the screen feels like paper. Uh, the pen pressure feels great. The only problem I, I have is that on the pen it has a button that I keep hitting by mistake. And it uh, always has, forces me to reset or like go backwards and erase what I just did. But other than that, I love this product. Morning everybody. So I am getting ready to head out to the Fletcher, actually <laughs> Civic Center, the LitCon. So LitCon in Greenville, Texas. I'm excited about that. It is 7 a.m. Um, it's about 35 miles away, so that's pretty cool. It's pretty close. I thought it was actually gonna be further. And I'm excited. So it's the first time doing this event here in Texas, spreading my wings, trying to get connections and try to, you know, broaden my reach. So uh, more to come on what happened.
Wilson. We arrived. Time to unpack. <laughs> Thank you. All right, I can tell you this part never gets old. It is probably the most relaxed I am because it's me, it's my product, it's um, doing what I love to do. Now, if you're looking from the outside in, it looks like a lot of work. And it's true, it is a lot of work, but it's fun work. So I love this part of the preparation because <clears throat> as I'm setting everything up I'm thinking about what am I going to do different this time what do I want to put in focus this time at this event what do I want to spotlight how do I want my table to be set uh, if you looked at any of my videos from before there's always something different each time out and I have to tell you events coming up I got some really exciting stuff for my table display. Uh, so you're going to have to check out the future vlogs. It's going to be pretty lit. <laughs> Considering I'm at LitCon. But uh, if you are in comics, uh, you know that for some people, this is a frustrating part. For others, this is the fun part. For me, this is the fun part. Um, but, you know, I did mention that uh, each time there's something different. Why? Because while each show is different in a different location, in a different city, and people might not have seen my original displays, I'm always learning when I'm at shows from others. So one of the things I always do is I go walk around, I peruse um, my colleagues out there, other creatives, and I look at how they approach specific displays, whether it's for their prints, whether it's for their comics or their books or for the stickers or trading cards, I'm always looking to learn on how to really upscale my presentation because it starts with presentation. And in the, and at the end of the day, you want to stand out in the crowd. You want people to, to walk by and go, oh, what is that? Uh, you don't want to get lost in the shuffle. Uh, you don't want to look like everybody else because everyone knows you had a convention, right? And, um, and it, but at the end of the day, we're all vying for a piece of the same pie. And there's only so much to go around. So I try to highlight my newest, latest stuff. Uh, I try to highlight things that are like top selling items. 
There are specific prints that uh, do really, really well. So I make sure that I feature those items. And uh, so, again, it's there's no right or wrong. It's only learning, evolution, evolving as each time goes on. And this setup has been years in the making. It didn't happen overnight. And it was just little by little, I made little investments until I had what I was looking for. All right, so LitCon was an unexpected surprise. You never know what you're going to get. Life's like, like a box of chocolates when you go to these venues, um, especially when they're small venues, right? And so it came across my desk. I decided to give it a shot. Um, why not? It was inexpensive. I think the table was $50. Uh, it was inexpensive. Um, it was a great investment. Um, I made that back multiplied by whatever, uh, but it was fun. You know, I went to the convention with no, no real big expectations other than just spending some time with my wife and, and trying to connect with new people. Uh, I can tell you right now, the promoters, the, the organizers, they were fantastic. They were so welcoming and friendly. They drove traffic to the table. They gave us free food. They, they fed us for lunch. They gave us bottled water. They were always very attentive. And and, and, and um, it was amazing. It was a breath of fresh air from the lack of regard that we get at the big shows. Because, you know, they just want our money. Um, but this this venue really, really appreciated the fact that we were there. Um, and the reception was amazing. Um, 
you know, the only negative part was that the skies opened up, thunder and rain started, and it was pouring, and uh, midway into the event, and then just, everybody just disappeared. Uh, so people started leaving, running to their cars to get out of the storm. Um, outside of that, uh, even with the storm and the reduction in traffic, uh, we did really well, and I had fun, and I would definitely do it again. Alright, so I had the pleasure of um, exploring my ute <laughs> um, by going to the Arcade Museum in Frisco, te Texas. I mean, this place is fantastic, I have to say. That, my friends, is a Vectrex. And if you don't know what a Vectrex is, man, Vectrex is, is a uh, vector displayed uh, based home video game console the only one ever designed and released for the home market that was developed by Smith Engineering and manufactured and sold by General Consumer Electronics it was released in North America in 1982 and then in Europe and Japan in 83 uh, this was fantastic I love Vectrex I owned a Vectrex it was fun back in those days it was um, groundbreaking for me uh, but uh, this um, arcade museum is in Frisco, Texas, and it was a fun way to escape the world and just uh, explore and revisit your youth. I mean, Donkey Kong. Who never played Donkey Kong? Um, you know, when you think about the first video game ever created, I think that was uh, Tennis for Two. Uh, a technician named Robert Dorrock spent about two weeks building the device after a long debugging the first video game was ready to uh, for its debut and they called it tennis for two players could turn a knob and adjust the angle of the ball and push a button to hit the ball towards the other players i mean this was fascinating i owned handheld consoles uh gaming devices um, that i used to play i had uh, space invaders and i had defenders um i used to play games like um spy hunter pitfall you know uh this place if you live in texas you need to go and visit this arcade museum it is by far uh amazing all right this video game right here was groundbreaking there was nothing of its kind when it came out it was the first game from the dragon's lair series originally released in 1983 by cinematronics it used laser disc technology um the, i mean i'm telling you we were addicted to it my friends raymond and angel we would go to the arcades and play this raymond was better than all of us in this game but it was created by dick dyer and if you haven't heard of dragon's lair you have to go and check it out it was fantastic from the clutches of an evil dragon you control the actions of a daring adventurer finding his way through the castle of a dark wizard who has enchanted it with treacherous monsters and obstacles. In the mysterious caverns below the castle, your odyssey continues against the awesome forces that oppose your efforts to reach the dragon's lair. 